One of the biggest complaints about making our home smarter is the need for faster and better Wi-Fi. After all, if you're streaming TV, running lights, connected appliances, using tablets, smartphones, computers, and a host of other accessories, your Wi-Fi is bound to get bogged down. Not to mention that getting decent coverage across the whole house can be a bit of a challenge. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and making Wi-Fi better has often involved getting a new router, buying signal boosters, or chasing a signal by moving around the house. Mesh Wi-Fi emerged a few years ago to help improve speed and coverage, and today, the second incarnation of Google Wi-Fi, now called Google Nest Wi-Fi, has taken the mesh concept and made some interesting improvements. I had a chance to have a Nest Wi-Fi kit in my home for a few months, and I'm here to tell you whether it changed things for me. Early heads up, if you end up liking this video or finding it helpful, to please hit that like button and give me a sub, because it does help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. So what is Google Nest Wi-Fi? Nest Wi-Fi is a mesh Wi-Fi system consisting of one main router pod and additional and expandable points. It connects to your home's modem or modem router unit, also called a gateway, and it spreads your Wi-Fi signal across the home or your business. Mesh Wi-Fi creates multiple connection points across your space so you don't get dead spots. This allows you to have multiple sources of powerful Wi-Fi through your home instead of just one single router. The newer Generation 2 version of Google Nest Wi-Fi also converts the Wi-Fi pods, or those points, into Google Smart Speakers too, meaning you can listen to music or talk to the Google Assistant and get help. One Nest Wi-Fi router with one Wi-Fi point is strong enough to handle up to 200 connected devices, and it's fast enough to stream multiple 4K video sources at a time, and the Nest Wi-Fi router and point are also backwards compatible, so these actually work with previous generations of Google Wi-Fi. So how does Google Wi-Fi work? This is not just essentially a signal booster. It's a new whole home Wi-Fi system that'll take the signal from your home's modem and spread it out all over the house. It creates multiple connection points in the house, so underserviced areas like the basement or distant rooms can get as strong a signal as you can being near the router or the modem. Google Wi-Fi plugs directly into your modem, and the modem is, of course, the device that brings the internet signal into your home. It's often hardwired um, via a cable somewhere in the wall. Now, usually your modem is connected to part of a router as an all-in-one unit, and the router is what allows your internet to become wireless. The trouble with a single router is that it can only cover so much and extend so far, and traditionally, user complaints have been that some rooms are just dead zones, or that top floors and basements can't get a strong enough signal to be reliable. Google Wi-Fi addresses that by creating a series of connection points all over the house wherever you need them. You can have as many Google Wi-Fi points in the home as you need to. Google tells me you can have up to 32 of these if you are in a really massive space. Truthfully, I was not looking forward to setting up the Wi-Fi. My experience getting things like routers set up in the past has been that it's tedious, difficult, and often requires tech support. I opened up the box and right away I was pretty impressed by the small card with the setup instructions. Just plug one of the Wi-Fi points into your modem with the Ethernet cable, then use the Google Home app to connect. The first generation Google Wi-Fi used the dedicated Google Wi-Fi app, though since that first generation you can also manage the Wi-Fi in the Google Home app. You'll plug one of the pods into your modem to begin the setup process and the Google Home app should actually see your pods and prompt you to start the setup. The next step is to name your network and assign it a password. The Google Home app will likely prompt you again to set up those additional Wi-Fi points or pods if you have bought a two-pack or more. The app walks you through where to place your pods and it wants them no more than two rooms away from the modem or the first connection point and in a location where you can talk to it potentially since these new Wi-Fi pods are also actually smart home speakers. These are Google smart home speakers, and we'll get to more on that in just a second. I can't say enough how simple this setup process was. The app made it absolutely foolproof, and the whole setup went smoothly with absolutely no snags. I test a lot of gadgets, and seamless, easy setup is one of the features I give really high marks to. In this case, I have no doubt that even a child could get these Wi-Fi pods hooked up in minutes. There's no IP addresses to worry about, no calls to your internet service provider, and no confusing instructions. I had the whole network up and running in under 10 minutes, 
Frankly, it took longer to go up and down the stairs and plug them in than it really did to set them up. I tested our home's Wi-Fi with the existing dual band modem router unit. Our old one was giving us about 178 megabits per second on downloads and 14 megabits per second on uploads. Switching to the Nest Wi-Fi gave me 320 megabits per second per download and held at 14 megabits per second on uploads at least according to Nest. When I reran that speed test using my ISP's speed gauge, it said I was only getting 42 megabytes per second on downloads and still at around 14 for uploads. So I'm not really sure who to believe here. What I can say though, is that I do feel like my devices run smoother and faster, and I do actually have a lot less downtime and fewer outages now than I did with my ISP's modem router unit. Having Google Wi-Fi gives you a lot more than just connections. There's a feature called Priority Device, for example, and this feature is so important to those of us working from home right now. The Priority Device setting allows you to prioritize Wi-Fi traffic to a specific phone, tablet, computer, or device. This works great in a house with several family members where everyone is often online at once. By prioritizing mom or dad's phone or laptop, the kids can keep using the Wi-Fi, but the majority of the data will go to the person that really actually needs it. Instructions on how to use this feature are available at techgadgetscanada.com. A setting called Family Wi-Fi allows administrators of your account, most likely the parents, to control exactly who gets Wi-Fi time and when. Using this setting, you can schedule pauses in internet use, say during homework time, dinner hours, or at bedtime. There's no fighting over devices, no negotiating, just 10 more minutes. You schedule the Wi-Fi to shut down and it just shuts down. This setting also allows you to select specific devices and alter the times of use for those devices. For example, your younger child's tablet can shut down at 7, while the older kids can keep on surfing right until 9. All of the settings and features are really easily controlled and managed in the Google Wi-Fi app or in the Google Home app. The sound quality is actually pretty good on this when using it as a smart speaker. It's a bit more akin to the power of a Google Nest Mini, maybe, but it sounds surprisingly clear and good, both for music and spoken audio. A queen sat sewing at a window. Overall, I had a really great experience with Google Wi-Fi. It definitely improved my connection speeds. It was very easy to set up and manage, and changing settings or adjusting the network for kids or guests was ultra easy. I haven't got a single complaint to make about this device. It's sold in a few different kits now. You can get one single router, which will cover up to about 2,200 square feet. That's for about 229 Canadian. One router and one point, which is what I've got here, which covers up to about 3,800 square feet, is now 299. And I think that's a sale price. Uh, the regular price is probably around 349, so you'll have to check that out when you're shopping. You can also get one router and two points to cover up to 5,400 square feet for about 459 Canadian dollars. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I talked about, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com. I've also got how-to instructions for a bunch of the setup things that we talked about in this video. Again, that's all at techgadgetscanada.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also catch me through Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.